Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I have a triangular box for you, but it's got bits that pinch in at the sides. And when you slide off this section, I'm going to discuss this in a minute with you, you fold up that section there and pull this with the little, the little handy helper. It opens like that. How lovely is that? You could fit jewellery in there, you could fit pencils, you could fit sweeties, you could put gifts and all sorts. And yes, you could probably put Toblerone bits in as well. It wasn't designed to look like a Toblerone, but it does. And it's got a lovely, lovely smooth finish. I don't know how well you're seeing that. Now this paper, this is from the Designer Series Paper Stack, which is six and a half inches long. I can't remember what that is in centimetres. And it does fit round at the back but kind of only just, and it's it's pinged off a couple of times, so I'm not going to use it. I would say you need just, you know, a quarter of an inch, half an inch longer, really, to get a decent close. Um, but that's the box. I'm going to show you how to make it today. I'm going to do the stamping and the framelit work first, because this is a framelit that's here, and I want to get it out of the way, because the Big Shot's taking up room on my desk. So, I've got the free celebration stamp set. So this is free if you spend over £45. Um, and there's, oh, I think there's 11, 11, 12, 13 different things you can choose. I'm using this one. I did a birthday one over there, but I'm going to do this one this time. So I've got it already stamped, set up on my block, block even. And this is one of those stamp sets that very much lends itself to um, using markers. So I'm choosing to use the So Saffron and the Smoky Slate. So I'm just going to colour in the sun. And you can see on all of these, they've got these lovely little motifs that, you know, you pick out the colours. And I made a card using um, this for the Around the World Challenge blog, and actually I used Daffodil Delight that time, but I fancy it. So saffron. And you just pick out the bits you want, and these markers are filled with the same ink as our, um, our classic pads, classic ink pads, and so you refill them in the same way, not that I've actually, in the last year, I've not had a pen run out yet, so there we go, and then you stamp down, how cute is that, oh, love it, that's brilliant, so I'm going to grab my Big Shot, and I'm using, actually I'll get the framelits out first, I'm using the labels framelits here, but I'm using one of these, then I'm using one from the thinlets, so it's the second biggest, which is going to go on the grey, on the smoky slate. And then from the Thinlet's card dies, it's the labels one. Obviously, it's, it's the same labels collection, but it's that tiny, tiny little bit smaller. If you can see, it's that tiny little bit smaller. There was too big a difference um, to go one size bigger with the labels collection, it would have just been too wide on there. And going smaller to this smallest one, it would have been a bit of a tight squeeze. So this gives me this lovely little hint of a border going round, if you can see that there. So that's why I've chosen to use those. So I want the smaller one over here, and then the bigger one on my scrap piece of grey. So let me move those out of the way and grab the big shot. And this is most definitely where you want to have your magnetic platform ready, because it's all about the positioning, so I'm slide that under and put that on there. And then this is the smaller one. And is that still in camera? I hope so. And I'm just going to position that up. I'll put my cutting plate over the top. Let's try that again. And then slide it through, and the cracking is normal, that's the plates doing their job. Move the big shot, reposition the paper because it would make my brain hurt otherwise. And these will just pop out perfectly. And then I want to sponge the edges. Now normally you would see me getting a stamping pad and dipping my sponge into it. You can, if you don't have the stamping pads and you have inks, uh, pens rather, you can take the side of your brush, uh, the brush tip end of the pen, the side of it onto your sponge and you will get the same ink 
and just go round. So you don't need to have stamping pads to do the same effect. So if you're if you're collecting the colours and you're doing it by collecting the markers, you can do the same effects. There you go. Every day's a school day, isn't it? Right. So those are those two bits done. So I can move all of that out of my way now, and I've got more room to work. So piece of cardstock measures. 8 by 11 inches, which is 19 by 27.5 centimetres. So you need that, and I've got the So Saffron. And the scoring with the long side at the top comes at 2 inches and 9 inches, which is 5 and 22 centimetres. Then you turn it round, so you've got the short side at the top, score it up 1, 3, five and seven which is two and a half seven and a half twelve and a half and seventeen and a half centimeters so fold your score lines and burnish them show you how to make this beautiful smooth finish here. You need a ruler, grid paper, something like that. I'm going to grab my ruler and you come to the third, the middle section here. Whether you're working in inches or in metric, um, you want the middle point. And just do a little mark. So it's five centimetres I'm looking at here, two, and a half, two inches. So that's the 2.5 centimetre mark or one inch mark. Come round and do the same on the opposite side. Should I turn it over so that you can see it in? See, I've done a metric version, now I'll do the imperial, my clever handy ruler. And then you just go from there, that point, to there. This ruler is so old, I'm not sure if it was my husband's or my dad's, but I pinched it from somebody. A steel ruler is always brilliant to have. There we go. So that's how that bit goes. And then to close the box, you need... I'm going to get rid of this bit here. That section, these uh, rectangular outer corners, don't need those. So we're going to get rid of all of those all the way round. And this looks like it's going to be a complicated build, but it really isn't. It's super simple. So those four bits we don't need. And then we're going to cut down as though we're heading towards this triangle. Cutting down this way. So following down that line. And do that all... Actually, I'm going to notch out as well. I'm going to do that again all the way round. And when we've done that part, we can then manipulate these scored lines that I've already done here. Because those are going to fold in that way. So it means I can bend these quite happily. And that will all tuck away in there. And at this point, everything's identical. It's identical that way and that way. So I'm just going to grab my corner rounder, which I forgot to get out, and round off all of these corners. Because no matter whether it's the bit on the outside, if that's still in shot, no matter whether it's this bit or not, or the bit that's inside, having the rounded corners makes the difference. It will just help it slip inside easier. Does it matter? I don't know which one I want to have as the inside. I'll go with this one as the inside. Fold over that section. An oval punch. This is probably my most versatile punch. Small oval, roughly in the middle, and you're going to cut a semicircle. 
which is just fired across the room and then that's going to tuck inside and that's actually how you're going to then pull it out so you're not bending all your lovely card so only need a few bits of sticky strip which is really is rapidly running out I've lost my paper snips And they are going to close at this point, so you want them on this hinge here, this uh, score line. Probably a bit longer than that, but you know, we'll, we'll go with it. Another bit. So then, when you take the backing off all of these, so if you do two at a time and you fold that round. That is the box sealed on that side, and there. And then the same through here. And that's the box built, so when you push in these sides, if I bend that bit back, this section here, you want it to go behind, let me tilt that so you can get it in the light. We need to get that to be the other side of this part here. So that is how it's closing itself together. And that is how it is staying shut. How clever. Isn't that cool? I love that. <laughs> so you could, you know, I mean, I could have left it like that. And you could put some magnets underneath, but I didn't want to. I wanted to use some paper. So I have got the high tide paper and you just bend it round. Basically, that's that's what you do. You bend it round the box. So you end up with it finishing at the bottom. You could score it if you wanted to. Um, I'm not. I'm just bending it around the box. And it works for me. And I suppose if you'd scored it actually, it probably would have been a bit too tight a, a close. So if I just reinforce those with my fingers. And you want this to be able to slip on and off anyway because it is a, you know, it's a kind of a belly band thing. So that will nicely go over. All over there, perfect. So a little bit of sticky strip along here. Sticky strip or snail or something, anything. Right, so I'll finish off this roll. It's so close to finishing. I've been saying this for the last five videos and it still keeps going. And that will keep sliding on and off, she says. There we go. It will just keep sliding on and off. And then just to finish, oh look, you see that it's it's pinged off now. It's just the six and a half inches isn't long enough. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you the measurements. Four and a half by seven inches, which is eleven and a half by eighteen centimeters. So just to finish that on there. And you can see that's got that lovely whisper of a border. And on the front. And those are my triangular boxes. How cute! Those are sweet. I hope you don't mind the video being a little bit longer than normal, but I think it's worth it, don't you? I do. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.